In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, and use a graph that we've already created in order to analyze the data a little bit further. Um, when we're using an XY scatterplot graph, uh, such as in this case, we can add some trend lines to the data to help us get a better idea of what is happening overall. Uh, and there's two general types of trend lines that we're going to use, either a polynomial regression trend line, um, or the second would be a linear regression. And so we're gonna, we can use both of these depending on the type of graph and depending on what we're measuring. And in this example, we happen to be looking at the effect of different number of drops um, of enzyme on the reaction, on the enzyme's reaction. So how many, uh, if we increase the number of drops of enzymes, how, uh, how is that going to affect the rate of the enzyme activity? Um, and as we've previously talked about, uh, or we'll talk about depending on where we're at in the semester, um, the, end, the rate of enzyme activity uh, will increase up to a certain point um, by increasing the concentration of the enzyme or the amount of the enzyme, uh, but eventually does decrease. Um, and so in this case, we can actually almost kind of start to see that. We see our data points increasing and then starting to decrease a little bit here. Um, and we can add in a line um, that is going to be based off of these um, to kind of get a better sense of, of what that looks like and we can even extend that line further. And so in this case we're going to add a polynomial regression line. And to do that I'm going to click on my already established uh, data points. Remember these are the averages. Um, I've used the means of the average values here to produce these. Um, so I'm going to click on these data points, you'll see that they're all highlighted. And I'm going to right click on one of these because um, I want to add a trend line. The other option uh, of, of how you could insert this that, that might be a little bit easier if you um, using this version of Excel, I can click on chart layout and I have the option to add a trend line. So I'll do that here. Um, I'm going to select trend line options. And you'll notice that there's a number of different options here. I'm going to do the polynomial and I'm going to leave it at the order of two, and I'm going to press OK. And what this is doing for us here is it kind of shows us how um, at one concentration drop uh, increases to two, at three, we've almost, uh, om almost looks like we've reached our, our maximum capacity and then begins to drop. Um, and so this is kind of an interesting uh, form of data analysis that you can add to your graph to kind of help you get a better idea of what's happening, um, if, if whatever it is that you're measuring um, has kind of a maximum rate and it increases or decreases above or below that rate. Uh, something else that you can really do with, with this trend line that's kind of interesting is, I'm going to go back to my options. Um, oops, I want to delete that. Um, I'm going to click on my trend line. I'm going to right click and I'm going to format trend line. And under the options menu, right here, uh, we can actually do a little bit of forecasting if I wanted to. If I wanted to see, if I wanted to extend this line further, obviously there's only one, two, three, four, five data points here, but if I wanted to extend this past uh, these data points, let's say that I want to do it forward two and backwards two. And so what this does is it extends this trend line uh, to what would be based off of the data that we already have graphed here, uh, two, two places. So we go one, two, uh, essentially one, two, and so we can kind of see where it would cross, uh, maybe the x-axis. Um, this might be interesting to see at, at what, um, uh, what would happen uh, if we continue to increase or decrease the, the amount of enzyme. I can also, if I like, uh, display the r-squared value and also display the equation uh, for this. Uh, on my graph, I can move both of these around a little bit here so we can see them a little bit better. Um, this one happens to have an R-squared value of 0 0.9283. And again, remember, we're measuring correlations. And so on a scale of 0 to 1, 1 uh, being completely correlated, um, this, this number is suggesting a correlation in this case. Um, so there we go. That's, that's a, a way that we can add trend lines to look at the data a little bit uh, more closely and, and use this information to analyze the data a little bit further.